Spencer, you guys will now take on the Wizards for the third time already this season. What do you remember about those last two games that allowed you guys to have the success that you did? Um, just coming out, uh, staying focused with the game plan, uh, having a certain intensity and effort, and you know, if we can get them out of transition and keep them in the half court, they're they're a much different team, and you know, uh, then we have a chance to win. When you look at the way you guys have started the game, I know that's been a topic of conversation. What's the style of play that you think this team needs to play at when it comes to right off the tip? Oh, I mean, I think we're we're starting phenomenal uh, players, and you know, Cam, Cam, and uh, Mikhail in terms of, you know, being able to really score a ball and, and, and do some very dynamic things for us. I think just overall as a, as a five-man unit, we just have to get some more stops. And if we do that, then, you know, we, we really let their scoring prowess take over and we have a chance to be a super dynamic uh, five-man unit. Has there been, in your mind, a common denominator in the defensive struggles from that unit to start the game? Um, no, I mean, I, 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 no, I wouldn't say that there's any uh, certain style. I would just say that, like, overall, we just have to be more attentive to the game plan, start faster than we are, um, you know, and then obviously uh, in terms of the big guys and things like that, keep them off the boards, which, you know, I tend to have, like, the, the bigger guys are just fighting them, you know, the Stewarts and the Markinens and the Van Carroll's and KD's and all that stuff, so. As a vet, I guess, with the way things are going now with, I guess, load management and rest, how do you feel about just the way the conversation has been as far as, you know, should guys rest, should not guys rest? As someone who obviously plays this game and takes care of your body, just how do you feel about where the league is going with that now? Um, I mean, every NBA team has sports science uh, departments. Uh, I think we have one of the best in the NBA, um, obviously our job as players is to prepare ourselves and take care of ourselves to be able to play every game. And then their job as sports science people is to, you know, try to look out for our best health uh, for the long term and, you know, for this season and hopefully the playoffs and into our careers. So it's just a, a mixture of, of both. And, you know, we're, we're all trying to, you know, win games at the end of the day, win the, win the most games during the duration of an 82 game season. And as players, obviously, you guys want to play. So when, it, when those conversations happen, how difficult is it if, you know, you want to play, but maybe the team says best interest? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, again, I think we're all grown, so there's a certain level of conversation. But at the same time, I mean, we are still technically employees, right? So, like, your boss tells you to do something, you do it. And it's not, you know, on us to complain, I mean, or anything like that. It's just we, we just – do our jobs at the end of the day. And I think we have uh, a phenomenal group of hyper-competitive guys that want to win every game, but also we just want to do our jobs at the at the best level uh, that we possibly can. And, and, you know, that's why our unit uh, is the way we are. As a veteran who clearly takes care of himself and works hard to take care of his body, have you noticed over the years that there is, there's a different dialogue with different players? In other words, maybe younger guys less dialogue with them, older guys that know their bodies better, there's more dialogue with oh, them. Of course, but that, that comes down to an experience factor. I think in any job, like if you've been in a job for 5, 10, 20 years, then you get a different level of, I guess, uh, conversation that's more ask versus more tell, you know what I mean? Um, versus like, let's say a rookie, for example. I remember my rookie year after... I had to be at every practice two hours early and after every practice, after all the extra work, I still had uh, 99 99s where they put 99 literally on the clock because that's the maximum time you could put. And then I would work out by myself against coaches, you know what I'm saying, and, and be there two, three hours after. And, you know, treatment maybe if I was really feeling broken, but that might be one every four or five days versus, you know, you get older, they ask you, you know, what lifts you want to do and, and different things like that. It's more uh, conversational. So that's just a product of experience. Spencer, question about just Nick Claxton and Dayron Sharp. When you see the progression that Dayron's made, what is it like to have two bigs play that type of position and the way that they're able to kind of be so versatile? I think it's phenomenal. I think it gives us two uh, different looks. Nick is rangy, has some of the best feet in the league, can play both drop and switch. Uh, De'Ron is a little bigger body and, and uh, shoot right now the best rebounder in the league, right? So uh, two, two different guys that bring two different dynamics, but, you know, make our defense and our, and our anchor uh, formidable. 
How have you seen Dayron just like grow as a group of the team? Like not just when it comes to on the court, but off the court as well. When it comes to just him finding, you know, being more vocal as a, as a group with the team. I think it's dope to see him, uh, you know, being more vocal. Um, understanding different schemes, uh, asking questions, uh, just blossoming all the way around. He's, he's a very talented kid. Um, he even showed you he can hit a three, you know what I mean? So uh, there, there's a lot that Dayron can do. And, you know, I said this in training camp, like we had a specific game where we kind of skewed the rules to rebounding to try to, you know, uh, spur more rebounding from our unit. And he was basically LeBron James in that, in that specific game. So, and he's showing you guys uh, uh, every night. Is a guy that's been around here for years. I mean, have you noted similarities in, I mean, this team's found a couple guys, centers, I'm going all the way back, J.A. and then Nick, and now Day Day, bottom of the first round, who they've taken and developed into really solid players. I mean, have you seen a similarity in their ability to do that, to find these guys? Um, yeah, I mean, their track record is immaculate. Their ability to develop uh, uh, late first round bigs is, is obviously there. Um, Jay signed for 100 million. Nick should, and you know, Dayron's probably a little bit more murky just because his game may be a little bit less sexy than those two. But like, he he has a ton of talent, and like I said, uh, he starts knocking down a three ball, then you know you're start you're talking about like drumming with a jumper. You feel me? So like that's that's a pretty dynamic type of basketball player. Um, and so, you know, I, I hope he gets everything that, that he deserves as well. With Dennis and Dayron and Dylan Royce, like this bench unit just seems like they they bring an extra energy when they're on the court. Like when you're playing with them, do you just sense a different energy from them? Like just their emotions, their actions, and just something about what they bring to what they bring to the court. Yeah, they're they're, they're high level guys uh, in terms of energy uh, and defense. And anytime you're getting stops and stifling another unit, um, any any bucket that or a string of buckets that you can put together really kind of breaks them just because they know they're not going to come down and and, and get a, a, a easy one. So you know when you have those type of defenders out there, it, it just really stifles the other team's offense.